Why so sad? I'm cheerful. Funny. Yes. Why don't you smile What? if you're happy? Why don't you smile if you're happy? Then now. Isn't it time to smile? It's not time. How old are you? 23 years old. The previous one was 19, yes. you know? Are you a career military man? No. Mobilized? Signed a contract. Do you give voluntary consent to the recording and publication of your interview? Yes. Then speak up, please. Fine. Because even I can't hear you. So, the contract. You signed the contract. Yes. When? In October 2023. What for? Liberate Lugansk and Donetsk regions. Where did you get the idea that this really needs to be done? Well, I studied with the guys who were immigrants from Lugansk. Did they also go to liberate the region? Yes. And you went with them? Yes. Got it. So it was just a general desire to free them? Yes. What happened next, where you were sent? Further, we were sent to Voronezh to a training camp. So, next? Then they sent me to the Lugansk region, to Markovka, and after two weeks we went into position. Yeah, what was there? There were already combat missions there. In what division? 25th Assault Brigade. Tell us more about combat missions. The village had to liberate... Which one? Sinkovka. What's next? We acted in groups. In small groups, we advanced toward the village. Mm -hmm. We have about three months for him. Mm -hmm. Were there any losses? Yes. Can you tell us about the situation that happened there? About tasks? Yeah, what happened situationally? Where were you going? How many people were there? Tell us about those who died, who were injured, who were maimed. Tell me about what this is. Since our unit had soldiers of different ages, starting from 90 years old and ending at 50 years old, everyone's strengths were not equal. There were many losses. Mm. Because some people couldn't even get to the position. Hmm. Well, there were a lot of losses in this regard. Only a few from this group had already reached the position. Hmm. And somehow they secured their positions. Yeah, understood. Were there any military clashes? Yes, there were clashes with the Ukrainian armed yeah, forces. Yeah, they were. Yes. Well, did you kill someone there? Yes. Yes? How many people? Don't know. How did this happen? In positions. In positions. Direct yes. immediate contact? Yes. Do you see the enemy? Yes. Shoot. Yes. You see that he died? Yes. You enter his position? Yes. You see that he is dead? Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. How many such cases were there and how did it happen? During the entry period there were four assaults. Four assaults? Yes. How many people have you killed? I don't know. Approximately, those cases that you have realized. I won't give the I'm exact number. I'm not asking for exact number, approximately. I think about 20 people. 20 people? Yes. Have you personally killed 20 yes. people? Yeah. How did you get captured? No. Have you ever captured people? No. You haven't? No. Have people surrendered to you as prisoners? No. That is everything constantly happening yes. in direct contact? Yes. How many people on your side died before your eyes? Well, as of January 2024, there are 28 men left of my company. How many were there in total? 120. There were 120 in total, 28 yes. left. Can you list the names of the dead? This is a big list. But look, I don't really care. People just continue to search and hope that their loved one was captured. Or perhaps several shell-shocked and unable to remember his name. If you can tell them information, then tell them. Well, I think our command has already reported this. Okay, fine. Next. How did you get captured? 
On January 3rd, there was the last assault. We took up a position and I was wounded. On January 4th, I was moving to the evacuate and came across Ukrainian intelligence. You were alone? Yes. Why were you walking alone? But that's how it happened. The rest remained in position. Hmm. I alone set out for our evacuation. Yeah. Got it. Got it. What happened when you came across intelligence? I was taken prisoner. Was there some kind of shooting or anything else? Our posts that were near me were firing. They realized that they had taken me prisoner and wanted to rescue me somehow. It didn't work out. Hmm. Understood. Did it all happen the way you imagined it did? No. What was wrong? There was little professionalism. Not enough professionalism. Yes. What else? There was no such support as there was for Ukrainian soldiers. What do you mean, there was no such well, support? Well, for example, artillery. Our artillery is not so accurate. That is, the problem is solely that the artillery is not accurate enough and there is no such support. I see. Has your opinion on the defense of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions uh, changed somehow? No. Has not changed. What was Mr. Girkin Strelkov doing in Donetsk in 2014? Don't know. Don't you know? No. What exactly were Russian troops and volunteers doing in the Lugansk and Donetsk region in 2014? I don't know what our troops were doing there. You don't know. Have you been interested in this? No. What will happen if it turns out that it was your country that started this war in um, 2014? And you in 2023, yes. right? You went to fight and killed 20 innocent people. Those who fought on their land and defended it. These were military people, the same as us. Yes, I understand that. We did not kill civilians. No women, no children, no old people were killed. I understand. I am talking about the innocence of people. That these are innocent people who defended their land. 2014, I'll just give you an example. I was 14 years old. I went to school and a guy from mm -hmm. Lugansk, my age, came to study with us. Yes. He returned from school and his house was bombed. A projectile. Mm -hmm. And his whole family died. I don't think that if Russian troops had done this, he would have come to Russia. No, that's not what I asked the question about. What if it was Russia who started this war in Donbass? As a result, this man's family died and his house was destroyed. I don't think so. Let me show you a few episodes. Here are the following words with which you characterized the conflict in Ukraine. I still pull it the trigger of the war. If our detachment had not crossed the border, everything would have ended like in Kharkov, like in Odessa. There would have been several dozen killed, burned and arrested. That would be the end of it. These are my words that I say back in 2014. And actually they contain the truth. I say what I think is right. Indeed, if our detachment had not come to Donbass and would not have become the core of the resistance, the center of the secure operation in Donbass, then most likely the Russian spring is suppressed. You better shoot over there. Who is this? Who? Don't know. You don't know? Don't know.
Let's wake up, guys. What? Now it's coming to them. Can you say anything about what you saw? No. Can you comment? No. What did you see? Motorola soldier. What was he doing? Shot from a grenade launcher. Where? It is right in that this yeah. is Donetsk. He fought there. It's logical that he is there. Where could these shells land? Into the buildings. Could there be a family there like this 14-year-old guy? Could have been. What can you say about Gyrkin Strelkov's first statement? He talks about a Russian unit that entered Slavyansk and, as he says, if they had not entered, there would have been no war. At that moment, in the 14th year, I didn't really care what was happening here. What can you say about his statement? This is an employee of the main directorate of the general staff of the Russian Federation, who claimed that his unit entered Ukraine, and if it had no enter, then there would be no war. There would be a civil war. Have you already figured this out of yourself? Yes. I affirm that there would be no civil war, because this person, unlike you, understands a little about what he is talking about, and he say that it would be like in Kharkov and Odessa. Where would have been several dozen killed, burned and arrested? That would be the end of it. As in general, they fight terrorism in any country. As long as foreign country does not invade, as long as another country does not interfere in the situation, how Russia did it. And it started from Crimea. What can you say about this? About Crimea? And about Crimea as well. I served in Crimea. And? In Crimea. And? Was there a civil war in Crimea too? No. What was there? They just took Crimea and that's it. They took it by force? I don't know, I haven't heard about the arm at once. Well, did Russian troops take part in the occupation, the annexation of Crimea? No, as far as I no. know, no. Understood. This means that Crimea is not a collective territory and Russia has long recognized the borders of today's Ukraine. Were they Russian soldiers or not? There were local self-defense forces. Our military personnel, of course, stood behind the local self-defense of Crimea. I'm not hiding it. Of course, this is a fact. We never hide it. Our armed forces, frankly speaking, blocked the armed forces of Ukraine, which were in Crimea. What can you say about this? Well, that's how it was. What, that's how it was? Our armed forces entered Crimea. So, did Russian troops take part in the occupation and if annexation of Crimea? If you believe this video, then yes. Is there any reason not to believe? Maybe. What about figure ahead? Having gone through all the difficulties of the war that I saw, I now try not to believe many things. Yeah, that were... I'm not saying that you need to believe or not believe. You can just ask and find this video in an uh, open source. In addition, there is also a medal called... Uh, For the Return of Crimea. It is awarded to Russian soldiers, so did they participate or not? It turns out that they participated. In short, that's the point. The Russian army, starting from Crimea, then Donetsk and Lugansk, invades Ukraine and the war begins, right? And you decide to take part in this. Tell me, please, how you are different from the Nazis? We do not harm civilians and we didn't claim... You are hurting civilians. 
No. Yes, you're hurt in civilians. Personally, our detachment in which I served, we did not harm the civilian population. Not old people, not women. Not all Nazis touch civilians. Okay, let's do it in this way. And we do not enroach on other people's territories. Don't claim other people's no, territories. No, I'm talking specifically about our squad. I'm not talking about the entire army as a whole. Because I can know how well, everything really you is. you went out to storm your territories or what? Lugansk and Donetsk region. Is this your territory? But no one forced Lugansk and Donetsk to join Russia. To become part of Russia. How did no one force this? They voluntarily became part of How Russia. How exactly? Lugansk and Donetsk How region. How exactly voluntarily joined Russia? Entire Lugansk and Donetsk region. Population of Lugansk and Donetsk regions. Yes. What is the population of the Lugansk and Donetsk region? Civilians. Population size? Don't know. How do you know then about entire? What about those who went to those Ukraine? Those who wanted. Those who wanted. Yes? Some went to Ukraine, some came to Russia. I believe that they did not move because of a good life. Yes, are the residents of Mariupol because of a good life? This is Mariupol before you came to liberate it, and this is after. Do you think all the residents of the Donetsk region wanted this to happen? No. Well, why are you speaking instead of them? How come you don't enroach on other people's territories if you are on the territory of someone else's side? Have you ever opened the map? Yes. You're on the territory of foreign country, how can you not approach on it? Okay, a different question. If you're exchanged back now, will you go to war again? I don't know. If they tell you to go, will you go? Yes. Yes, everything is clear. There's nothing to talk about like that. There's nothing to talk about like that. Here's your mom's answer. She won't be able to talk to you. This is the wife. The wife? She won't be able to talk to you. I understand. Why? She is at work. Today's Friday, she has a working day. You're in captivity, in foreign country. Yes. Yes. She can't spare two minutes to see you. She is at work. Get out. Well, this is not a person, not a person. These are not people. You don't know yet. Do you give voluntary consent to the recording of the publication of this video? Yes, I do. Why not? Why did you even volunteer to come here? I actually got here the third time. Call-up papers kept coming. I was released from prison in 2020. No, no. Why did you volunteer here to me? To you? Yes. Guys come here and talk and you let them call home. But you don't need to call home, you call. I called home. Did you say everything? Yes, I'm just spending my time here, I'll talk to you and they will pass. Did you want to talk? But I can, I wanted Did to talk. Did you just come to kill time? Yes. So be it, okay. Tell me, when you were mobilized, where were you mobilized? Tell me whole On story. November 2 last year, it turns out I was mobilized. The next day we flew to Rostov. Yeah, next. From Rostov we were already brought to the location of our unit in Storm Z. Where? The nearest settlement was Sladkovodne. What area is this? Zaporozhye direction. Zaporozhye. The village of Sladkovodne. Understood. Why did you serve time Article in prison? Article 111 part 4, yes, 111 for duration 7 years. This serious harm to health resulting in death. Serious bodily harm. I see. This was the first time? Yes, for the first, first time. First time. How much time was left? Served all seven years. How much was left? No, I was released in 2020. Ah, you were already free? Yes, 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 I was what free. What motive did you have for going to war? I went because color papers kept coming and irritated me. Employees from the military registration and enlistment office arrived. Uh, when they came for the second and third time, I also had to go with them. And we had, as we were told, to free them from terrorists. Whoa. 
Freed from terrorists? Well, it's been my experience that it's not here. Or maybe you are the real terrorist. But that's probably what they call us. But in fact? But in fact, uh, uh, when we arrived at the unit, we went out on a combat mission. Well? Specifically, we were told, specifically to me, my company, that in this area, in this territory, that we're specifically terrorists. There were Georgians, Poles. They said that there are terrorists there and that we must liberate the territory from terrorists, liberate this forest, as if so. And when we actually came there, we didn't see anyone there except the Ukrainian guys and our guys. And even if there were Georgians, Poles, Lithuanians, for example, British, do you understand that you are in Ukraine? We understood this already when they brought us. Uh, why should you liberate or seize some territories in Ukraine? Initially, initially, we generally, we were actually in Rostov at first. Understood. They then took us there, brought us back and simply told us in fact that it would be like this. You can't retreat. I get it. Have you given an answer to this question for yourself? You're from Russia. You have a right in a foreign country. They tell you that there are some Georgians and Poles here. Have you ever wondered why it matters to you that there are some Georgians and Poles in, in Ukraine? In fact, it's not of our business. We began to understand this when everything was already happening. Tell me, what happened there? It turns out that uh, when we were brought there, when we were brought there, I can tell you how I got captured in the first no. place. What, before you were captured, there was nothing interesting at all? What's really interesting about it? There were training sessions, uh, training ground and nothing more. How long have you fought in total? It turns out that from November 2, two months. Two months. Well, training is only a no, month. No, we had two weeks of training. Two even weeks, two and, and then weeks. another month and a half. We stayed there for a month and a half and went out on combat missions. Well, there were combat missions. You probably had direct contact with your soldiers. Well, no. We were like the final ones. We just came there and were bombed by all kinds of guns. All kinds of guns? Were there any wounded, any On dead? our side. Yes. Constantly, on every mission. On each mission. Well, How a many group were of six wounded or seven people, the older group and the rest. Killed, wounded. Well, yes. Well, tell me about the situation. How does this happen? So that the viewer from Russia who watches this will have a good idea of how this really happens. I can tell you about the last task. Uh, we have not yet reached our destination and our commander has already run away somewhere. That is, uh, he has uh, disappeared without a trace. He left and disappeared without a trace. When we went a little further, we already had wounded, two wounded from a mortar and one dead. And the uh, three of us had already reached our destination. Do they stay in the field? Yes, this is normal for us, where we will take them. Were the other corpses inside? Of course, there were constantly. Constantly. Both on our side and on the Ukrainian side. So you're side. walking alone and yes, you see a dead body. somewhere you can see an old corpse, some were bones. Some have already decomposed. Somewhere there are can just bones in the clothes. Bones? They took off some of their clothes, someone took off their bulletproof vest. They're lying in a uniform. It's clear. Shrunk it bodies. Can we say that the fields and plantings are uh, thrown with corpses? Well, yes, you can say that. In some forest plantation this is true, because they can take them from there. It is simply impossible to take the dead from there. If you go there for a deceased group of two or three people, then there will be at least two more corpses. This is at best. Have you ever stepped over a corpse? Yes, this is at best two dead. I understand. Did you have to stop over corpses, for example? There is a corpse lying on the road. Did you step over it and I move had on? to sit in positions and in dugouts with corpses. Even so? Because we ourselves could not get out of there, because we could die. I had to sit there with the guys. That is, you go down to the duck out. Yes, and there is knee-deep water. It's cold as ice. And the corpses are and in the ice. And there are just corpses sitting there. Yes, in the ice. Some are in the ice, some are different. Some of them are killed and still lie there. Is this how you imagine it? No, this is not how I imagine it all. Understood. Okay, along the way the commander got lost, some were killed and wounded. What happened after the three of you arrived? We get in touch with the company commander, the one who supervises us. We tell him about what happened. We are told to take command. This is how we begin to navigate ourselves. 
invent something if we can't go out we say we had that the last time it was captured first of all they took us to the wrong place the person who was entrusted with bringing us back, uh, escorting us, took us to the wrong place. We got lost. This man disappeared completely. We contacted the command. They told us that we would not be replaced until we both a group uh, that we needed to take the initiative. And in order to bring a group, you need to go out and find your way back. So the two of us, since uh, no one else wanted to go, we were afraid. My colleague and I, we went on reconnaissance. Within half an hour, my colleague was killed. The drone dropped a grenade on him, and they dropped a grenade on me twice, but I managed to trick the drone a little. I was injured. I was under the tree for three days. It was either theater or large hiding. I lay under it for three days. Then I gradually began to crawl along the road, focusing on the marks. Our blue marks were there. I was crawling and heard conversation in the dugouts. I heard conversation in Russian. I crawled a little more and lost conscience is because I was uh, dehydrated and lost uh, a How lot of blood. How long have you been crawling? It turns out that we spent four days without water and food at all. For another three days I passed under the tree wounded. Understood. And when I regained conscience, Ukrainian soldiers were sitting in front of me. They treated my wounds on my arm and leg. They gave me hot tea and food and gave me cigarettes. They told me not to worry that no one would kill or beat me. But were they Nazis? No, these were Ukrainian soldiers, young guys. But they say that we have Nazis everywhere here. So I was convinced from my own experience. I saw for myself that there was not a single Nazi there. I haven't seen it at least. Maybe someone somewhere sees someone, but I personally haven't seen I it. I can tell you exactly who sees it. Solovyov sees. Kabiva sees. Simonyan sees. They see them all the time, even in their dreams they probably see them. And what they dream about, they then tell you on TV. Well, if they came here at least once. Where, for assault? Well, yes, at least they were a little closer. I think their worldwide would change about this. But this is this. probably the only Russians I can really invite here. Come on, seriously, come and take a look. Because um, they deceive you a lot. They tell stories. It turns out they are deceiving. But people believe. People believe because people don't come here, they don't see all this. Yes. That's it. Once captured, you're captured. Yes. I really wish this guy's health. Others would be in their place. I am their enemy. No, you're an exchange fund. You don't understand. No one loves you and no one wants to take care of you and the like. I can give you your Russian military uniform, take you out into the street and they'll take you apart into molecules. That's not the question. Civilians will dismantle you into molecules because your missiles are flying at us. And the guys at the front simply understood that you can be exchanged for our fighter. You're an exchange fund. We need to save your life. That's it. This is logical, simple, understandable. In essence, you're an occupier. Essentially, this is how it works. It doesn't work. It doesn't come naturally. It doesn't depend on you. It happens somewhere. It's just a fuck. You made this choice. You came to a foreign country as an occupier. You came considering that this is the Zaporozhye direction, right? There are stories about how Donetsk and Lugansk will be defended. But you have the Zaporozhye direction. When I came here, I really regretted it. Thank God I survived. In general, how do you assess your chances to stay in life? Chances? Yes, under the circumstances that you saw. Being on the front line? When was I there? In the circumstances in which you find yourself. To be honest, the chances there are very, very small. Every day I open my eyes, you realize that this may be the last few hours of um, your life. This is not the war that we know about in history. Even if we take Syria or Afghanistan as an example, this is a different war. 
the guys on the front line don't live very long. So, well, uh, this is a global question. I don't know if you will answer it or not. Why does your president need this? I say your president because he was the one who announced all this. Why do you think he needs this? Why is this necessary in your power? Can I leave this question without comment? Fine. This question has no comment. I just didn't think about all this. Didn't you think? And even if I thought about it, no one will know the truth anyway. Really? Well, I think so. Fine. What is the truth from the point of view of an ordinary Russian? Why do you need this? I don't need it at all. I believe that Russia has everything to live peacefully. Agree? I agree with you. Russia has everything to live, prosper, raise children, and so on. But nevertheless, he announces this so-called special operation. Announces, so if this needed for something. But we still won't know the truth. Fine, let's try without finding out the truth. Just listen to one statement and tell me what you think about it, okay? Our plans do not include the occupation of Ukraine. Look at the dates. We are not going to force anything on anyone. The appearance of Russian troops near Kyiv and other territories of Ukraine is not connected with the intention to occupy the country. We have no such goal. As for the long process of the result of a special military operation, it is natural that this is a long process. Also, you mentioned it. You mentioned that new territories have emerged. This is, after all, a significant result for Russia. I can tell you how I understand it. Donetsk and Lugansk themselves choose to join Russia. I have this information. I can't say anything about the other territories. This is true. You're telling the truth. We won't know. I played you a video of three remarks from your president further. First, he said that Russian troops near Kyiv mean nothing. That they are not going to occupy anything. That you do not need the territories of Ukraine. To the question about what the goals of all this are, why it takes so long, he answered that new territories have appeared in Russia, and that this is a significant result for Russia. You don't need to know the whole truth. Draw a conclusion from these remarks. Well, apparently... Apparently he is trying to take over Ukraine. Well, again, why? I can't understand this. We have a lot... Uh, we have such a country, we have everything. There is a lot of land. More than anyone. Yes. Personally, I don't understand this. Let's watch another video. This means that Crimea is not a collective territory and Russia has long recognized the borders of today's Ukraine. Were they Russian soldiers or not? There were local self-defense forces. Our military personnel, of course, stood behind the local self-defense of Crimea. I'm not hiding it. Of course, this is a fact. We never hide it. Our armed forces, frankly speaking, blocked the armed forces of Ukraine, which were in Crimea. I have nothing to say, honestly. I'm just wondering, should I move on Donetsk and Lugansk and explain to you that they didn't quite want you to join? Or maybe Russian troops went there again. At first Putin said that they are troops, then he said that they are not troops, but that they are self-defense forces. And then it turned out they to be troops. They probably didn't have a choice anymore. Who? Donetsk and Lugansk. This is close to the truth. This is close to the truth. In principle, when Russian troops enter, in general, troops of any country enter the territory of another country, when those who did not run away, and a lot of them ran away and left, they had to. Those who remain have to agree at gunpoint. But only until Russia came, people 
lived well. And even until 2022, the territory that was not occupied, Mariupol, also lived well. Do you know what happened to Mariupol after 2022? This is what happened. Can you imagine? This is Severodonetsk. Until 2022. Everything went something like this, then it became like this. It was the Russians who came to protect it, understand? No, this is all very scary. This is what Avdivka was like. There is not a single living tree left here. Bakhmut. Here it is. And that's it. There is no more life here. They had a quiet life. They could travel to Europe with the Ukrainian passport without hindrance. They could travel around Ukraine and anywhere else. Can you imagine? People leave, everything is fine with them. In every sense, everything is good. Of course, there are some problems that people always have, but overall it's good. And suddenly war and occupation come to them. There's not even the internet, there's nothing. And the Russian soldier asks them something. They may be afraid and not respond. But they responded they as could. they saw fit. They can say that under Russia they live better, but they say that they lived better under Ukraine. I know why you came. We generally sit there without cigarettes and I'm nothing. I'm sitting talking to you and at the same time thinking why you came. So I was arguing with them yesterday. They say that when they come to you... In you're... general, everyone knows that I give out yes, two but cigarettes some to everyone. come and say that you don't give it to them. We fight with them about this. Tell them they are too arrogant. They are given the opportunity to call home. They are still dissatisfied that they did not give them cigarettes. No, come on, stop, wait. First of all, I give it to everyone who asks. And if the scum came, there was one recently. He said that the, he killed 20 of our people in battle and that he fought to protect a boy from the Lugansk region with whom he studied and who lost his uh, home because uh, of the evil Ukrainians. And I start showing him the video and asking what their troops have been doing in the Lugansk region since 2014. I tell him, what if people like you weren't there, then such boys wouldn't have problems. But he doesn't understand. He says he supports Russia. He even says that if he is returned back to Russia, he will come here again to kill people. This is despite the fact that from his company of 120 people, only 15 remained. He saw all the same horrors, but he is convinced that everything that happens, happens for good. Allegedly, Russia is doing everything right, but supposedly you need to be a little better technically prepared. That is the bad thing is not that they are killing, but that they are not killing us well enough in sufficient quantity. Do you think I'll give him a cigarette? This of is some not. terrible behavior. He's just an idiot and scum, that's it. I'm saying that you should be glad that they at least let you call. They are still unhappy because they are not given cigarettes. Some really insolent ones. Agree. Agree. Now they would be sitting in a hole and not here. Here are books and documents, rules and civilization. Of course, if a person has sincerely talked to me and he is trying to interact, I can give him a cigarette. Hold it. Smoke it. Thank you. No problem.